lot of action on today's Safety and Awareness Today show. Hi, Cliff Crandall here with Eric Stolick, and I want to bring some information to you. It's a new book written by Eric Stolick, and I co-authored it, and it is Be Safe Physically and Mentally with the Crandall System. This new book is available, and it covers women's self-defense. Self-defense with a cane. That's right, and child abduction prevention. As well as self-defense and escape techniques for teenagers. All right, look for this book in your local bookstore, or you can stop at the American Martial Arts Institute to purchase your copy. Right now we're going to cover an escape technique for young adults from being grabbed from behind and picked up. All right, there are some things that can be done. We're going to use Ed to help us here. And Curie, if you'll come in a little bit, turn around, Curie. As Ed picks Curie up, it appears that she's helpless, but she's really not. If she can think quick enough, there's some things she can do. If Ed picks her up, holds her up, she can smash her head forward and back into his face. Now hold your head straight up, Carrie. Put your head over Ed. As she puts her head back, she's going to smash into his nose. Tear glands are going to work, and it can do some damage. At the same time, she's going to bend her knees and drive her heels back, which is going to kick into the knees. Okay, let's let go for a minute. Let's try it once, and you do this with your head, and you do it with your feet, and let's see what happens. You ready? Go and head and feet and boom and go. All right, let's come on back. That's what we're seeing happen out there on the street when they're picked up. Doesn't matter what kind of clothes they're wearing. They can drive their head back into the face. They can put their heels into the knees. One last time and up and boom, boom, boom and she's gone. Very nicely done. Let's move on to another piece of information right now. Right now, we're going to cover a piece of information regarding general safety and how to handle ourselves in the world around us for boys and girls. Now, Nick is here with me and Kylie and Mike, and we've talked about it before. And Mike, you're a pretty big guy. How old are you now? You 12. 12 years old. Oh, my goodness gracious. He's a big guy for 12. Boys and girls, no matter how big, tall, or small they may be, boys or girls, need to know how to help adults. And basically, there's one answer. When an adult comes to you and asks you for help, to help find a puppy, to help carry some bags to their car, what should you be doing, Kylie? Go get another adult. Go get another adult. You did that well, and we talked about it earlier. Kylie knew that. Nick knew that. If you want to help an adult, you go get another adult. Right, Mike? Yes, sir. All right. We don't, you don't leave yourself the opportunity to be taken advantage of because you think you're the one in charge because you're helping. All right? To help an adult, get another adult. Welcome back. This is our teenage segment of the show of safety and awareness today. And we're going to deal with a cross wrist grab and freeing yourself up from a cross wrist grab. Again, we're not looking to punch and kick and fight. We're looking for teenagers that are grabbed by somebody in a cross wrist grab to get free. Mr. Fiore and Mrs. Fraley, if you'll come out for a minute, and they face each other. He cross wrist grabs. She goes ahead, she reverses her grip, she palms the elbow, she swings her foot back around, and that will throw him that way, and she can get out. Now let's take a look at it a little slower. All right, move out this way just a bit, and right here. Grab. At this point, she's going to do what's called a reverse grip. All right, in other words, basically her hand was here, it comes up palm facing her, 
it rotates and drops onto his wrist. That's the first thing. Now the next motion is that she's going to pull that arm and by pulling that arm she's going to lock this elbow. She's going to palm to the back of the elbow. She has some good control right now. There's a lot of techniques that use this as its foundation. But this is one of my Crandall system freeing up techniques for teenagers. So I don't want her to do a, a, a sundry of other things. I simply want her to get away. Therefore, her right foot is going to swing around back, and she's going to pull, and it leaves him little option except to go face first on the mats or wherever they happen to be. Good. If you two will move off to the sides, please. Eric, come on out. Come on out, Carly. Let's watch Carly and Eric do that. A couple of young teenagers and see what happens. He grabs, she reverses the grip, palms the elbow, swings her leg back, and she's free. Nice and smooth action. Let's do it with a little more power. Are you ready? Set, go. And in she, boy, there was some commitment that time. Very nice. Eric, Carly over here, come on in a little closer. There's the technique. Reverse grip, palm, swing, rotating your hips, that circular core action of your hips, dropping this person that has done it. I would suggest again, they put their arm around your waist, they put their arm around your shoulder, they grab your wrist, verbalize your disapproval first. If that doesn't make a difference regarding the situation to your satisfaction, take the physical action to free yourself up. Right now we have the opportunity to cover snowmobile safety. And I'm pleased to be with Jeff Stone, and it's a pleasure to pleasure. have you on the show. And we're here at Shenango Import Motors. You cover what kind of, what kind of snowmobiles do you have? Yamaha snowmobiles. All right. Beautiful. And you have some used ones. Yep, new and used. New Yamaha and used. Yep. They've gotten sleek. They're beautiful. They're powerful. Matter of fact, there's padding on the handlebars now. This is really nice. Yeah. All right. Now, with the speed, how fast? Accessible 100 miles an hour. 100 miles yep. an hour. That, that is just a lot of machine that you're moving through. The know, woods, with the trees. Yep, the yep. woods and the trees. With. Um, regarding concerns about snowmobiles, we know speed is one. They go fast now, and people have to be aware that you can't just take it for granted. Right. Therefore, safety courses would be advisable. Exactly. Yep. All right. And we can find safety courses in you know all over the the Northeast, especially through Central New York. There right. are courses available. Yep. So check for them and look for them. One other thing that you and I talked about earlier that doesn't mix with speed and is alcohol. Uh, yep. Is alcohol, yep. and and I think that's worth mentioning. No matter what machinery we're talking about, alcohol doesn't mix right. with this stuff. Good. Now, if you're out on the trail, a couple of things you might want to take with you would be yeah, you know, a spare belt, um, spare spark belt. plugs, and, uh, and trail and map, and, and a trail map. Yep. So you know where you're at. You okay. Know? And we talk about. Trails, and there's a lot of trails out there, and they're maintained by clubs. Yep, mostly maintained by clubs, yep. Agencies. Now, clubs are worth checking in, too. What's some of the benefits there this year? Well, this year, actually, uh, New York State has uh, raised the um, registration to $100. But if you do belong to a club, you get to pay the 45 okay. So you pay the $25 fee to be a club member, and then you get to pay the $45 registration instead 45 of $100. Instead of 100. Yep. And it would be $100 per snowmobile. Per snowmobile, yeah. So if you had a family and you had three snowmobiles, that's $300. $300 yep. Okay, I see that really yep. quick. Um, as far as safety in uh, dressing warm, a lot of people don't think that that makes a difference, but it is. it does, it, it make, does a make a difference. difference. Yeah, exactly. Uh, not only just in appreciating being out snowmobiling with people and friends, but uh, simply for your own well-being and health. Yep. Okay. We have a couple of helmets here. I have a <clears throat> motorcycle helmet here, and a motorcycle helmet could be changed into a snowmobile helmet if you change the, the, the shield. The yep. shield. Yep. And that really makes the difference. Makes a difference, yep, from fogging up. Okay, from fogging up. And uh, we were talking earlier, though, that a, a snowmobile shield Isn't really... is good for the street motorcycle at night. At exactly, night, because right. it doesn't give you visibility. It doesn't give you correct visibility on the street. All right, so realize that you can turn your motorcycle helmet into a snowmobile helmet, but you can't leave it like that and ride with it as in the a, summertime. In right, the summertime. Yep. All right. Yep. Now here, we have a beauty here. This is a snowmobile, snowmobile helmet. With a double lens shield. Yep. With a double lens shield, and that helps you what? It helps the fogging up, you know, fogging the cold up weather, for your breath. Yep, yep. Okay, and that really, and with the cold weather, and obviously you stay Visibility warm. is important. You don't want to be looking through a little hole. 
<laughs> Not when you're whipping down the, exactly. the trails 70 miles an hour. There's also such a thing as um, electric ones. Yeah, electric shields are available too. Yeah. All right, and electric gloves, in, electric yep. vests. Exactly. And they plug into the snowmobile. It's amazing. There's so much more to learn about snowmobiles and snowmobile safety. Check into a snowmobile agency, a, a business such as Shenango Imports, and learn as much as you can. It's very interesting and a very exciting sport. Thank you for your time today. Thank you. All right. Welcome back, and right now we're going to cover another cane technique, all right? And with cane techniques, you don't have to work a great deal on being able to block and do all sorts of things. You simply know how to use the cane. You need to know how to use the cane in leverage areas, all right? We're going to deal with a grab. If you two will face each other, we have Mr. Stalick and Mr. Fiore here. If you'll grab his arm. Now, once he grabs, he's got this hand ready to punch, but he puts the cane in, steps to the side, and push, push. There we go. Okay, let's do it one more time a little faster, and then we'll describe it one more time. Grab, go ahead, and go, push. That's it. Now, that leverage gives this man no choice. Once this cane is in, pulling one leg up and leaning across, the upper quad muscles and rolling those muscles into this primary bone right here, this person is going to go down, which gives you the chance to leave or move or actually strike if you needed to with the same tool that freed you up from their grab. Be aware that the cane has a multitude of functions and uses for blocking, for blocking as you move it, as well as striking, but leverage which we did in another cane technique, leverage of the cane, knowing how to place it on one part of the body, line it to another part, and then push is what gives the cane such a unique self-defense uh, potential. All right? We're going to go over more cane techniques in the future, but keep in mind the cane, and uh, the more people that I've had ask me about it, the more I, I realize we want to present these to you because you are quite interested in the cane techniques. We're going to move right on now to another segment. This segment of our show is going to deal with fitness development. In other words, how do you get the strength and the balance to do some of the techniques that we describe and teach on the show. And I'm very fortunate to have with me today Colleen Timi, who's a fitness professional. It's a pleasure to have you with us on the show. Happy to be here today. Oh, Thank you. Wonderful. Now we're talking right now about developing fitness or balance, which is my key concept for men, women, 40, 50, 60, 70 years old. And this exercise is what? This is the cable lat pull down. All right. Okay. And well, how you use this is use your lats and your internal obliques. It really works the core. It's excellent for core work. All right. Now which I've done so this. I've done this over the years, but there's a number of ways to do it. If you don't do it a certain way, you don't get the core and the obliques. You right. actually get your your biceps and your upper lat muscles. Yes, just like we were talking yesterday. All right. About so it. we yes. really need to be able to focus on doing this exercise correctly to develop the balance we want with our body. Yeah, because core is is everything. Is everything. All right. Well, let's let's see you set up for this. Okay. Reach up for the bar. Yep. Okay, draw it down with you. All right. And the first thing you want to do is kind of sit forward a little bit, okay? You're going to lean slightly back. You lift up your chest. When you do that, you automatically draw the shoulders down. All right. Okay? Then you can begin the movement. And you can see, if you go behind me, go right behind me. Yep. Put your hand between my shoulder blades. Yep. I want you to feel that. Now watch. The weight is moving, but you didn't feel a lot of scapular retraction, no, did you? Okay. No, the scapula bone really didn't do a lot. Okay, now. Whoa, and the scapula bone came right back to my palm. See that? I feel see that? It. That's it makes awesome. all the difference. Oh, right man, there. that is a big difference. Okay. Big difference. All right. Yep, Excellent. you want to try it? Let's test yes, you on it. Yes, let me try it once and see what we okay. got. I'm about to do this exercise. You have this way up. Yeah, I don't want you to have to rely on that to hold you down. Oh, I like that. It helps. Yeah, I know it does. Oh, okay. Never mind. Okay, here <laughs> we go. Here we go. And I'm down. Yep. Yep. Okay, now hold on. I okay. want you to scoot forward just a little bit. And you're okay. used to holding this down with you, okay? Yep. Now, I want you to really think about using your latissimus dorsi right here. Okay. And the internal 
an external obliques as your opposing muscle group. Now lean back towards me a little bit. Yep. Drop your shoulders down. Yep. Good. Tip your head forward just a little tiny bit. Good. Now let me feel those scapular retraction as you draw it down. Whoa. Excellent. I love that. Yeah. Oh my goodness. That's and that's, it right that's there. developing balance. Well, when you I really do it that you're way. working the core because you're again you're working your lats and you're working the internal and external obliques. They're the stabilizing muscle for you as these big guys work right here. Okay. Nice job. Excellent. Nice Excellent. job. All right. Okay. Well, now there, ladies and gentlemen, is one exercise that will help develop some strength for some of the techniques we're doing, but also that awesome, important balance. Thank you for being with us today on the You're show. You're welcome. All right. Happy to be here again. Yeah, and we're going to go to another spot right now. Hi, right now we're going to take a moment to bring you awareness that also makes your life safer, and that is awareness about identification, passports, and I'm fortunate to be here with Maureen Marion. Hi. Nice to have you with us today. We're going to talk about passports. She's a public affairs specialist for the post office here in New York, and passports have become much more complicated, haven't they? Well, it's an interesting thing. We, we have found in the last several years that more post offices are now a place we can come to get the passport, and we have personnel available who have gone to extensive training in partnership with the Department of State in order to facilitate your passport. That's wonderful. We're here at the Utica Post Office, mm -hmm. the main one, and they will take your picture. Yep. They'll help you with the paperwork. Okay, two pictures. We'll two help pictures. You with the, yeah, we need two pictures. Two pictures. And we will help you with the paperwork, work, walk you through the process. And um, mail it out that day. We sure can. We That's sure can. awesome. Now, there's something online going on with passports. Absolutely. A lot of people have found that when they come, they want to minimize how many steps they take. Right. So they want to come with their paperwork almost intact. You can get papers to file for your passport online, either through the Postal Service, just put up yep. USPS.com and go to Passports and everything's there, or you can go to the Department of State, same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, most post offices that offer passports also have paperwork in line. You may have some nuances or shading unique to your family. You All may right. not need the same paper person to person, so okay. you need to know that so, ahead of time. So that's worth knowing. Now, here at the Utica Post Office, so when we're standing in front of, you really should make an appointment and let them exactly. know when you're coming. Exactly. They ask that you make an appointment here, and some of our offices actually have been scheduling extra days to help people on the weekend or whatever when it's convenient for folks. And with kids home from college, it's a yeah. great time to grab those. And that's amazing, too, because as you're saying, it's becoming more and more demanding because we're now going to need passports if we're going to visit Canada, if we're going to go to Mexico, any place, basically, you exactly. need a passport. Some of the requirements for passport acceptance at the border start to take effect as soon as this January. So okay. there's, it becomes more something that you just need in your back pocket. Plus, for business or for personal pleasure, sometimes the opportunity to travel comes yeah. in a heartbeat, and it's great to have something. Yeah, and this great passport makes a difference. So as of 2007, you're going to need a passport exactly. if you're going to travel. It is the way to go. They've become a little more complicated in how they're designed and how they're made so that they can't be duplicated, but they've become easier to get through the cooperation of the post Well, office. and again, we point to the folks who have had so much training. They're ready to give you that extra hand for some of the issues that may not be the same family to family. That's excellent. Thank you for being with oh, us no today. no problem. Thanks it for coming out. It gives us some information regarding your passport and future travels. Right now we're going to talk about home safety and I'm fortunate to be here with Chief Raymond Philo of the New Hartford Police pleasure Department. To be here. Uh, pleasure to have you with us. And talking about home safety, when you leave your home, whether it be during the holidays or whether it be going south for the winter months or any time of the year, there's some things you can do to secure your house. What are a couple of those things? Well, first of all, we suggest that you either cancel your mail and newspapers or have somebody that you trust pick them up every day. That's a clear <clears throat> sign to a burglar that nobody's home. That nobody's home. We also suggest that you keep your lights on auto automatic timers All right. um, and, and perhaps even a radio on automatic timers so All it looks right. like your house is occupied. So there's some, and the, and the automatic timers like this one right here now, uh, some of them have multitudes of on and off times so that you can really kind of vary them and if you have four or five of them in the house, the house looks alive and it looks active. Yes. <clears throat> one of the other things we mentioned is, is start those timers a few days before you go so that there's a pattern so that they're seeing people there while those lights are going on and off at that same time. That's right. All right. and. 
uh, uh, community watches. We have a sign right behind us by the police car. Uh, yes, if you're a member of a neighborhood watch, let uh, your uh, watch members know that you're going to be away. They act as extra eyes and ears for the police department, and they'll watch your house for them or right. for you. Yep, okay. And and uh, one other thing that, that I thought was kind of unusual, because uh, most burglars are under through a window. People just don't lock their windows. They don't lock their windows, so we suggest before you go away, you make sure all your windows are locked. All the windows and doors are locked. All right. This has been some safety on home security. We'll catch you on our next show.